Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Some people around the region woke up to snow for Thanksgiving Day, especially those living in and around the Twin Cities. For others, it's been quiet, the calm before the storm, if you will. But we are watching for some activity later tonight. Let's find out about that and how it's looking for anyone who's got early morning shopping plans for Black Friday. Here's Nathan with your No Wait Weather Planner. Nathan. Yeah, I know some folks are getting out there right now, lined up at some stores, and right now just a few clouds. Radar does show a few of those, that blue there, some snow showers, but I'm looking at surface observations, not seeing any actually hitting the ground, but you could have to fight a few flurries, especially in our southern and western neighborhoods if you are heading out to uh, the stores for your Thanksgiving uh, night. And, of course, the big storm that everyone is talking about is the storm coming in later tomorrow into Saturday, and we do have a winter storm watch in the yellow and a winter storm warning in the red in our extreme southwestern neighborhoods. So, uh, of course, we will talk more about that coming up in just a couple minutes. And it's because of this system right here, still off with the Rocky Mountains, but it does look to make its presence felt here across the Red River Valley as we head into the first half of the weekend. So for tonight, if you are planning on heading out and about, look at this, temperatures in the upper 20s with a bit of a southeastern breeze here in Fargo, mostly cloudy skies. Again, may see a few flakes or flurries here or there, but nothing uh, to accumulate on the roadways for this evening. Same goes for Grand Forks where cloudy skies, temperatures actually rising by midnight from the lower 20s to the middle 20s for us. And of course, the big question, Andrea, is how much snow we can get and when we expect that snow to hit. And I'll have all the answers to those questions coming up in a couple minutes. Sounds like there's a lot of it out there. And there is a We're lot of it. I'm just going to say that. That's yeah. right. We'll talk Th about it. Thank you so yeah. much. And the best place to check the latest radar is with the Valley News Live Storm Team Weather app. You'll get the latest forecast and the conditions wherever you go so you can plan your day. All you have to do is search VNL Weather in the App Store and then download it for free. Along with family, friends, and good food, there are those who are grateful to find a Black Friday deal. Some stores have already opened their doors for shoppers, including Target and Best Buy. Target is where we find Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie, who's searching for shoppers eager to get started filling their carts. Courtney, what's going on? Hi, Andrea, and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All of us turkeys out here have risen from our food comas and are ready to shop till we drop. Now, the doors here at Target might have opened just moments ago, but we've been out here braving the cold alongside all of these shopaholics since about 3 o'clock. That includes Joy Otmar. Joy, is this your first time Black Friday shopping? Not my first time. We've been doing this since I've been pretty little. And actually, when it was actually on Black Friday, it's now Thursday night. So, yeah, we've been doing it a long time. All right. And are you looking for anything in particular? Um, I have three sons at home, so it's always electronics, Apple products, that type of thing. So, yeah, there's always a mission. All right. Thanks, Joy. We'll let you get back inside and get to shopping. Thanks for talking with us. And we did speak with the family that has been first here in line at Target for the last nine years straight. You can hear from them tonight on Valley News Live at 9. Back to you, Andrea. Wow, Courtney, that was nice of Joy to stay behind it and uh, talk with you. So hopefully she'll get her deals anyway. Thanks for that live report. When people judge why, why um, people choose to stay in relationships, they don't always understand that it may be easier for that person to stay in the relationship. Court documents reveal that a North Dakota woman experiencing domestic violence committed suicide in a video chat with her daughter. And that has experts wanting to get the word out more than ever that there are resources in the Fargo-Moorhead area for those struggling with suicidal thoughts. Valley News Team's Joshua Pagero tells us the places you can go. When a person dies by suicide, it's just not one life that's impacted, but a whole community. Court documents recently filed in Cass County detailed a dramatic suicide in Fargo. A woman staying at a motel back in May called her daughter over a Facebook video chat. She was holding a gun to her head. She then began crying to her daughter, telling her she could not do it anymore. Next thing you know, the woman pulled the trigger and the phone fell to the ground. The woman had been living with her boyfriend at the motel behind me, and court documents state there were allegations of domestic violence between them. It's something that starts at a very, very young age. It's modeled and learned. The Rape and Abuse Crisis Center in Fargo saw nearly 3,000 people last year. More than half of the cases were for domestic violence. 
Myla Corbel says domestic violence is a public health issue. There's a cycle that goes on in these kinds of relationships. And so when you start to notice these patterns, but a person does, doesn't seem to be your same friend, your same sister, as far as connection to the family and the friendships, that's a big indicator. She says try not to pass judgment if someone's in a relationship where there's violence because you can alienate them. First Link in Fargo offers resources to those who may have suicidal thoughts. Quit keeping things secret um, and making sure that others know that we are struggling, we're having a tough time. Life is difficult sometimes. We all have struggles in our life. First Link has been around for 50 years and they have a 24-hour hotline. First 24 hours of leaving a healthcare facility when you've been having thoughts of suicide are the most dangerous. So we want to call them within 24 hours of getting that referral. The executive director says most people have suicidal thoughts, but they do not act on them. Suicide carries repercussions that can break a family apart. In Fargo, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. The resources offered at the Rape and Abuse Crisis Center and First Link are free and you can be confidential. You can also call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That phone number, 1-800-273-8255. Authorities are still working to identify the occupants of a vehicle involved in a high-speed chase on Highway 10. It happened yesterday afternoon when a Clay County deputy tried to stop a vehicle that had been stolen on Highway 10 near 280th Street. Authorities called off the pursuit after speeds exceeded 80 miles an hour. You can call law enforcement if you know anything about that incident. A 91-year-old man has issued a citation after an injury accident in Grand Forks. Authorities say it happened this morning around 8.45 when Grand Forks police were called to the intersection of 32nd Avenue South and Columbia Road. According to police, 91-year-old Andrew Terry accelerated into the intersection, hitting the driver's side car of, of the car. Both drivers were taken by ambulance to a hospital. Police say Terry was cited for disregarding a traffic signal and not wearing a seatbelt. A family in Badger, Minnesota is without a home this Thanksgiving after losing it to fire. According to a family friend, it happened Tuesday morning around 8. The five people living inside were all able to get out and were not injured, but several pets died in the flames. That family friend, Derek Mogan, says the cause of the fire was reported as electrical. If you are looking to help, an account has been set up for the family at Citizen State Bank of Roseau under the names Jeremy and Jennifer Sandin. They are currently staying with family and friends. President Donald Trump made a surprise visit to Afghanistan to spend time with U.S. troops on Thanksgiving. President Trump arrived at Bagram Airfield shortly after 8.30 local time and spent more than two and a half hours on the ground. Reporters were under strict instructions to keep the trip a secret to ensure his safety. Vice President Mike Pence also visited troops in Iraq this week. Former Bison quarterback Carson Wentz took to social media today to announce he and his wife are expecting their first baby. In his post, Wentz wrote, so much to be thankful for, but this might take the cake, adding the baby has already been such a blessing. The announcement showed up on both Twitter and Instagram.